Welcome back to another review and today I'm going to take a look at a new book called Game Anim by Jonathan Cooper and it's a very interesting book at least to me because I'm not versed in the game animation aspect since I'm working in VFX animation. So this book was a fantastic overview over the whole process at least to me. So anybody who's involved in game animation this book will be something else. So I'm curious if any of you are doing game animation leave a comment let me know what you thought about the book. But here it is. That is the size not too big, not too small, lots of interesting chapters. So I took some notes, let's go through one by one about what's going on. I'm obviously not gonna go through the whole thing. I highly recommend that you buy it and check it out for yourself. But there are some elements that I thought were really cool and also overlap with VFX animation and just animation in general that will be of interest to you, at least I hope. So. As you go through, you can see obviously content. There's a lot of stuff in there and the chapters are really well organized in terms of it starts from the very beginning of what does it mean to be a game animator, the animation principles, then the elements of game animation, the process of how to go through a game from beginning to finish, polish aspects, and then ultimately demo reel tips for the end. But I want to just again go through some of the elements that I really liked here. And one, and you can skip all this. This is the author. Don't skip this, Jonathan Cooper. So again, it starts with what it means to be a video game animator. Nice and broad with a lot of interesting general advice about animation. It's actually right here about life experience. It talks about not being stuck in a bubble and just exploring life and having a life outside of your work or your passion that might be just video games only and don't copy things that are familiar meaning don't play other games and then copy those games look don't look for games in terms of that is my reference and that's the same for animation in general if you do a performance you're not going to look at an animated movie and look at that and copy that you're going to act it out yourself have a body that acts out for yourself look at actor stage actors just in general life observe so that you can take real elements and incorporate that into your animation. And in this case, for game animation. Anyway, continues on. Next thing that stood out, he was talking about reference and reference is not cheating. Sounds obvious to people who are doing this, you know, for a couple of years, like you need to use reference. There are some things that are so complicated that you need visual reference, you need to understand the mechanics and it can give you a good inspirational jump. It's a good springboard for things. But as a whole, reference is not cheating. He makes a point and I want to make that point too to anybody that's new to animation who's starting out, reference is not cheating. So as this continues, you see game development environment just general advice and this goes up to what I have here is page 26. That is your general look at animation and then it looks at the 12 animation principles which obviously everybody should know. There are great little examples about what it means in relation to games and in general all of these are in there. Very neat. But what's really cool is that he has an extra chapter about new added fundamentals that would relate more to game animation. So here you got five fundamentals of game animation, feel, fluidity, readability, context, and elegance. And again, not going to go and, you know, scan through almost every page here, but you should go through and check it out. It's actually really, really neat. And this goes through momentum, blends and traditions. And as it goes through again, lots of examples. You got special boxes that point out very hyper relevant information, so to speak. It's almost like a little summary of what's going on, like a special point to make about a chapter or, or about a topic, which is really neat. But again, it just covers a lot of really interesting elements. And actually going back here, when it comes to readability, there's a special mention of avoiding one axis movement, which is actually part of my most common animation mistake series I want to do. And one of them is one axis movement, also covered here in terms of game animation. This is really cool. I love this here special mention of League of Legends, just in terms of pushing the poses, how far you can go with stretches and just frame by frame, silhouette and everything. There's really important subjects, obviously, cover silhouettes, 
Collision center and mass balances, again, this is all very game specific, but there are enough really interesting overlaps between broader animation principles that apply everywhere. And then it goes back into, well, this is very game centric and pay attention to this if you're doing game animation. Same with this, when you have context and placement of where the character is, if a character is relaxed, they're going to move one way. And if the character is panicked, they're going to move another way. Something I stress all the time is in terms of where do you place your character? The set can influence the character. The state of mind will influence the character. Again, all of this applies to game animation, obviously, as well. Then continuing here, you have what do you need to know? Basic animation concepts, you got cycles, transitions, talks about skeletons, just different setups in terms of spline work, collision movements. There's, again, a lot of detail in terms of specific game animation production, additive layers, very cool. And actually going back, if you look at the graph edit the chapter here, he does talk about a specific approach in the workflow where you key the whole character, not separate controllers and the messy keyframes and over a certain amount of time. It's the whole character at very specific times so that the whole character is keyed on that one tick and tick in terms of the Maya timeline. And then you can move those around for very quick edits. Highly recommend that workflow approach. If you haven't done this, try it. If it doesn't work, you know, throw it out, but at least try it. And I'm always happy when I read someone else's workflow, be it in the book or online, I go, oh wait, I do the same thing. So I'm not wrong. So maybe I'm, I'm on the right path. It's just for me, it's, it's good validation because I'm, you know, even though I've done this for a couple of years now, you're still, I mean, at least I'm still insecure about how I go about it. Is this the right way? Am I doing this wrong? This doesn't look good and so on and so on. So if you have someone that at that level goes, no, this is how I do it. Like, oh, I do the same thing. It's very validating, it's very comforting. So anyway, it continues with a lot of specific game principles, state machines, additive layers, partial animations, just in terms of what you can do to get your animation done. It does cover IK and all of this that we do as well, but blend shapes, muscle simulation, again, everything is tailored towards game animation. Now, in terms of the game animation workflow and reference gathering, the cool thing is this, don't be precious. Absolutely, you gotta go in there, try something out, if it doesn't work, throw it out, try something new, it's all about a fast workflow. So again, I'm very, very happy that this is mentioned here. And this continues until here where we have game pre-production. That is for sure a longer part. Again, I'm not gonna go through every page, but you should look at it on your own and pay for it. But as it gets to here, it's interesting as it talks about animation memory and compression. For my very, very brief stint on uh, Force Unleashed, we helped out quickly. Uh, it's completely different workflow, much faster where um, there was there was not enough time to kind of show your blocking pass, which was almost right away approved. So the animation was already pretty rough. My big surprise was that once I saw it in game or just in final form and cutscenes online, how um, there were still some jitters or contact points on tables were not as clean because of compression. So there's always kind of a trade-off, you gotta be careful. Me having no idea, that was a big surprise. So it's, for, it's interesting to read, at least for me again, because I'm not familiar enough with this environment, uh, these chapters here. And they, actually compression uh, comes up later on as well. It continues with animation tool tips, which is cool. And then by the way, every now and then you have an interview. This could be one, two, three or more pages, which is also cool. And then we get into gameplay animation. Again, skipping through quickly, but there are some interesting points here about seamless loops and walk cycles. Walk cycles are hard. So having this and lots of tips about this, is very, very cool. And especially here, when it talks about what well, these are the common mistakes when you do this. Just add a little list of what you could do better. Climbing and mantling, alignment, there's so much covered. I mean, again, if you if you know all of this, you might go, yeah, this is a standard book and maybe it's basic, I don't even know. So again, leave me a comment what you think. Is this too broad? Is it just detailed enough? Again, for me, not knowing this, I thought it was a really nice overview with still enough detail to kind of, I would say, understand the process better because I haven't done it hands on, but it definitely gives me a better overview. Visual feedback, telegraphing, follow through, lots of awesome things here. Another interview, again, there are a couple of these. And then continuing on here with, this is the other cinematics and facial chapter. One thing that was really cool was the five C's of cinematography. And there's actually a really cool, I think it's a GDC clip about game uh, animation cameras. I'm gonna link that in the description. If I find it, there will be a card with the YouTube clip. So a card will be here. Check it out, it's very, very cool. Cutscenes, do's and don'ts, always awesome. 
And then continuing on, it gets into the facial stuff where it talks about eyeline. And the thing that I took out of this was eyes are more important than lip sync. And I completely agree. When you look at your character, you look into eyes. So for me, eyes and eyebrows will tell so much more. And the lip sync obviously has to work, but I would try to go this way and just look at, is the emotion really coming through? And don't worry about the lip sync. That being said, I'm also a foreigner, so I grew up with a lot of kind of bad dubs or movies or just a general lip sync that is not matching, right? So an American movie is dubbed in German or in French. The lip sync's just not gonna match, but it doesn't really matter. I'm also really used to this because again, I grew up with it. But there's something to be said about really, really well done eyes and eyebrows to convey emotion and not really, not saying not caring about lip sync, but knowing that it's not as important. Now, there are some moments where someone does something more extreme with the face. So yes, then you gotta pay attention to that. But in general, completely agree, eyes, super important. And then from a technical point of view, he also talks about how the eye line can change depending on the render. And we have the same problem in VFX animation, that you do something in your play blast, it looks in a certain way because you have different lighting and different textures potentially, right? But it won't look the same as a high res, full feature quality render. And then that render appears and then your eyes are just beep, slightly off in terms of the look. There might be a little add a texture or refraction or reflection or something, some wet layer over the eyes that will change the eye lines. It's super important to always double check. So what's I think important for people who do shorts or their own little renders, little short stories or whatever it is, and you planning on rendering it with proper lights and textures and everything, just make sure that you always kind of render early, at least the eye section, so you know that the eye line is the same. It doesn't have a sudden slight off look and that might you know be problematic later on. And then continues on with shape transitions and all of that good stuff in that interview. And then it's obviously motion capture. Motion capture is huge in game animation. Lots of very interesting tips in terms of, this is cool too, directing actors, props and sets, the setup, set building, virtual cameras, so good. There's really, really good stuff in here. Then it continues into animation team management, which at this point, again, I'm not gonna show everything, but it does talk about animation critique and having a thick skin, meaning that you're gonna get feedback from other people and you have to be prepared to that. Not that it have to be unnecessarily harsh, but they're gonna look at, is this working for this game or whatever cinematics that you have? And it's the same in VFX animation where you're gonna have different clients and clients will speak to you differently in terms of how they like or don't like something. So like the main thing you need to remember is that when you work at a company, you are working on someone else's reel. It's someone else's vision that you are exploring, fulfilling, whatever term you want to use, but it's basically you're doing work for someone else and it's their demo reel. You know what I mean? Like you're working on someone else's demo reel. So you might get feedback that you disagree with or that potentially makes the shot worse or whatever it is, but it, it shouldn't really matter you're gonna do the work for someone else and every time you do a new version, you put in another 110% every time you do a new version. But you, obviously you gotta train up to that, you gotta get used to this. So at the very beginning, if you're starting out in animation, you're sitting in dailies and you have harsh feedback, just don't freak out, it's normal. Everybody's there to help, just don't take it personally and it's a process that you have to go through. Continues on into polish and debug and there are lots of really interesting polish hints and tips in terms of cycles, foot sliding, consistencies. Again, this brought me back to that one clip from uh, Force Unleashed where Leia is doing that wiping on the table. That was the one that felt like, and people I think hands on the table. I gotta find a clip and maybe if I find it, it will blend it in or I'll cut this and show you the clip and then cut back to me. Did I show this? I don't know, I'm recording this now. I hope I showed this. Which again, has a special mention of memory management and compression. This is how your keys will look like or change depending on the compression. And then we go on to the future. Game animation reels, it talks about how you should always have a reel online and be prepared. That being said, depending on where you work, always check in terms of permissions. So if a, for us, if when a movie is in theaters, we can't put our reel online. Technically we can, in terms of copyrights and permission, we should never put our reel online unless it's on a page with a password. So it's hidden and just the recruiter gets that password. But technically, technically you don't own the rights to show things publicly unless it's in a trailer but it is very, very common to see reels online and I haven't really heard anything about enforcing this. I got spoken to about it at one point and I, you hear things every now and then, but in this climate, I mean, everybody is pretty much hired on a project to project basis. You need to have your reel online for a new job. So I don't think it's gonna be enforced as much as it's legally supposed to be, but still 
check with things, but anything that is not released for movies, be it DVD, Blu-ray, 4K or streaming, whatever, don't use it. If it's in theaters, don't use it. If it's in trailers, you can. At least that's what I was told because that went through the whole PR machine and that is ready for public consumption. So any shot that is in a trailer, you can use it. Tells you what to use in your reel. And then I really like this section here. You got editing your reel. You got reel breakdown in terms of time codes. I think that was a very smart point. So that you have your shot breakdown that you can click to very easily. It talks about the resume, your web presence, and future technologies like AR. And that's it. And here you got your, your index. And boom, that is it. Again, that is the book, Game Anim. This rig, you can get that online. I put the link in the description if you wanna play around with this. I haven't yet, but I will hopefully this weekend. And if I did, I will retroactively add a card. Again, probably here. So I'm gonna to point to nothing right now, but once I've done this, I will link to uh, my clip about the, the rig. So hopefully that goes into my animation buffet section where I look at rig and do kind of rig tests. But that's it. Jonathan Cooper, awesome job. I don't know you, but I follow you online. Thank you so much for all the hard work on this. For me, not knowing much, I thought it was great. If you have other thoughts, I won't say complaints, not complain publicly, right? But if you have any thoughts about, oh, this was cool, I have stuff to add to it. Or yes, this chapter in this book helped me in terms of this, this, and this. So anything you want people to know, because comments are there to share, to educate people, let other people know. Other than that, this is Game Anim by Jonathan Cooper. Any type of links that will help you get this book, I will put that in the description. Check it out if you haven't yet. You can get it on Amazon and many other places. And that is it. So if you watch this whole thing, as always, till the very end, I highly appreciate it. You know I don't mind if you give me a like and a subscription, hit that bell button to get all the notifications for all the uploads. You know the typical YouTube drill. That is it for me. Next review is gonna be probably the Stream Deck or another book. There's another more a drawing book that I thought was really, really cool. So I'm undecided, but it's probably gonna be the Stream Deck and that's gonna be in a couple weeks, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching.